Welcome back to Murray's Minis. Today we are going to be looking at scratch building Dogledore terrain. We'll also be sending this beautiful piece of scenery home to one lucky subscriber. All you have to do is leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel. And on the 30th of October, I will draw one lucky person and I will be sending you this beautiful piece of terrain. If you want to support the channel in another way, there's always our Patreon in the link below. To start off with, I cut myself some lengths of seven meter wall sections and some hexagonal columns. I also put a lot of these off-cut pieces to good use. They were just spare bits from the process of making the hexagonal columns. So I started out by marking out my brick patterns with my metal ruler and a mechanical pencil. You can use a normal pencil. I prefer to use a mechanical one for this stage. Some people use pen, but I find a mechanical pencil works pretty well. So I laid out the general floor pan of the building you probably could get away with doing this a little bit earlier. I used some dried up paint that had set on my cutting board uh, and it actually worked out as a really good way of adding texture to the pieces of foam. It was really quick and dirty but gave a very very natural looking effect. You can also use uh, rolled up uh, aluminium foil. So I used my metal ruler to indent the individual stone. This really helps to give some recessed detail and really brings it out. So after I'd cut all of my lines, I then accentuated the brick marks with my mechanical pencil. This probably is the longest part of any of the process, but it's actually very, very rewarding once you get into it. So I cut out the windows and door sections on the ground level before I put it together. I would recommend doing it this way instead of doing it when the building is all glued together because it just makes your life a lot more simpler. This was advice I did not follow for the second story and it caused me a little bit of bother and the horrible squeeching, squ scratching noises drove my wife round the bend. But I wanted with this building to have very, very angular windows and doors. When you look at the plastic kit that GW will be releasing very, very soon, and pictures from the film itself. There's all these very, very angular architecture. Everything is on very, very harsh angles. There aren't many curves or very, very sort of natural looking motifs within the architecture. So I used my hot glue gun. This is probably one of the best investments I've ever got. The Dremel one is really good. It's a dual temperature, so you can pretty much glue anything down it's fantastic it's really worth investing into a good one i've done tried to do scenery projects before with a cheap one and it took me weeks and i never finished it because it just took that long to stick in an individual brick and wait for the glue gun to heat up so i'm using these off cuts from the pillars and i'm using the 90 uh, the 45 degree angles on my cutting mat and I'm using that to create little facades on each of the windows and doors. This is a bit of creative license here because this doesn't actually appear on any of the artwork, any of the photographs from the Hobbit films, but I thought it would look nice and it's just a little bit of creative license I took, but I think it adds to the overall aesthetic. It creates some interesting lines and just adds to the silhouette of the windows and doors and keeps things from looking too basic and a bit boring. So I cut out myself a floor section, trying to keep within the lines of the walls, although my cutting wasn't exactly very, very good. That's why I'm now filling it with hot glue. Quick word about that. Yeah, do it slowly, because most of this hot glue just poured out of the hole and onto the actual model itself. You can see here my cutting wasn't very straight. I'm, my hot glue gun it isn't the best in the world and I don't tend to get that straight lines with it. So I decided to do some texturing just by cutting out chunks of the foam with my clippers. This is a really good way of adding that sort of damage texture and detail. When you look at the different types of foam I'm using here, the grey foam, it's not as high density. So when you cut into it, 
it has a spongy foamy texture which is really annoying because i had to go in with polyfiller and fill all of them in to get them looking more like more natural stone so you can see here i'm marking out my windows and cutting them out while the model is well this floor in particular has been glued on don't do it it's a pain in the ass it makes things so much harder just do it before you put each floor on with this project i took it floor by floor i textured detailed the floor and then moved on until i was all the way to the top i cut out some triangle um, looking sections for the stairs and glued them I, I marked up roughly how many steps it would actually be to reach one floor and i think it was about eight eight individual steps and you can see at this point i've sealed in the model with i think it's a mixture of pva glue matte varnish and polyfiller and a bit of water so this way you can super glue onto it and it won't melt through the foam because if you don't seal in your foam and you stick some super glue in it it will just melt all the way through it and totally ruin what you're doing so i'm using coffee stir sticks to emulate the metal work that slapped all over the stone uh, of dogal door so you may be wondering why i'm using this be considering the wood texture but this is something that we can resolve really quickly and really easily and the end result is actually really nice but it's just a quick cheap e easy way of doing this sort of riveted iron on top of stonework so although there isn't much sort of orky architecture on Dolgaldor itself i decided to do something a bit different for the top level i didn't want it to be all stonework i wanted there to be some improvised sort of shackled looking structures at the very top so i created these beams just to support some wooden planks i glued them down with a bit of super glue and yeah use that to create some wooden planks but at this point i realized that i couldn't really leave the top of the building like this because there's all of this damage detail and there isn't that much of a roof section on top of it it just wouldn't look right i ended up using a couple of my off cuts and um, just gluing them in there a few more of the top pillars and damaged them up a little bit just to give them the right effect and the right look so it looks like this building would have continued on at least a couple of more floors before it was eventually damaged and a bit ruined which i thought worked pretty well so i used balsa wood i think this is one millimeter balsa wood for all of the wooden slats on the top of the orky architecture and i used actually quite a lot of these but i didn't use all of them in the end actually i was actually quite reserved with it which is a bit strange for me because usually when i go into my orky architecture mode i plaster as much um balsa wood as i can onto the models themselves so i thought i'd just take a moment and say that if you want to do scratch building there's nothing wrong with taking the dog or door kits that are coming and sticking them on maybe just using a couple of these techniques to maybe get that kit to go a little bit further or if you want to do a complete scratch build it's actually really really satisfying and you can create any sort of building shape that you want to out of it you're not limited to the plastic kits um, at this point i stuck on some twigs these were from the roots of a bush in my front garden that i'd pulled out ages ago and these had all dried up so i just stuck them on in various places just to give that sort of creepy eerie feeling like there was life growing all over this building but now all of that life has died out now that there's this malevolent presence that has moved in and taken over these ruins and it's a really fun quick way just to break up that rocky texture because stonework can become very very boring to look at so this is how we're going to fix the coffee stirrer sticks and make them look like metal first thing you're going to need is a polyfiller i believe you call it spackle in the usa this is just ron seal stuff but you can use any stuff you can get like cheap stuff out of like a pound shop and mix it with 
baking soda. This really adds a lot of dirty rustic texture. And if you're gonna be doing sort of rust effects on metal, you want there to be a very grainy texture to it. And yeah, it's a really good trick. And just slather this all over the coffee stir sticks. And when it dries, you have a really thick, gritty, rusty, grimy looking effect after you're done. And it completely obscures the fact that these are coffee stir sticks. At this point, I decided I was gonna cut out the excess of the base because I used an A4 sheet, I think it's one mil chipboard, and I wasn't gonna be needing that much. And if you leave lots of this stuff, large amounts of this material around, it's just gonna fray on you and it's gonna ruin the effect that you're going for. And I wouldn't recommend it. So cut it down, you don't need to do it completely to the edge of the building, you can leave some environmental stuff there for sure. So I slapped down some polyfiller and I also, at this point, dug out my AK Interactive Rough Texture. I've pretty much used a whole pot of this in two months, which is kind of insane because it is a massive, massive pot. But I absolutely adore this stuff. And if you rip up a cork, like a um, champagne or a wine cork with a pair of clippers, cut it all down, stick it in a pot for your basin and when it comes to doing rocky texture with this stuff you can just plap them down and then just mix them in with the AK interactive ground texture and it leaves you with some really nice rocks and it just breaks up that kind of smooth looking effect that you've got there. So slapping in the coffee stir sticks, nice and easy. This isn't a particularly labor intensive process. We're just gluing sticks down. Just a quick word to say that you don't have to use these building techniques just for a double door build if you wanna do a D&D &D encounter in a building that's very, very angular, rugged, and a bit menacing looking. You can actually absolutely use these same techniques um, and ideas. There's nothing stopping you from doing it or a completely different type of you know fantasy adventure, whatever you wanna do with it. There, there are fundamentals of scratch building terrain that you can use for pretty much anything. And it's a lot more rewarding than, for me, taking a plastic kit and gluing it all together because everything on this was handmade, scratch built, and I can do whatever I want with it. So this is a building tutorial. I'm not gonna go through how I painted this thing up because it's pretty much the same techniques that I would normally use if there are certain things that you would want me to cover in a different video, like how I paint my rusty effects or how I do my stone textures, um, just leave a comment asking for a tutorial. I, I don't mind, I quite like the idea of doing specific different painting tutorials, whether it's stony textures, whether it's rusty textures, I'm more than happy to do it. So that's how we can scratch build ourselves some nice cheap, Dogal Door Terrain. Don't forget if you subscribe and leave a comment, you will be within a chance to take this beautiful piece of terrain home. Just make sure you leave your comment and subscribe to the channel before the 30th of October. Thank you very much guys and we'll catch you on the next one.